Hey everybody, how's it going? B Temple finally back again. Seems like it's been um, quite some time since I've done a ration review of any any type. It's been uh, it's been a busy last few weeks, months. I started a new uh, a new job, new position just after Easter, and uh, that's been pretty busy. And then also had a bunch of uh, laptop problems. Laptop completely died on me and had to get reformatted and reinstall Windows and all that fun stuff. So obviously then I lost all of my editing software and all of my file transfer software, everything like that. I had to get that all back up and running again. So it's been quite some time since I've done a review, and I thought if I was going to come back and do a new review, I wanted it to be something that was, uh, you know, a bit special and certainly interesting. So what we have here today is something that is obviously going to be the oldest thing I've yet to review. So what we have here today is a U.S. Army Field Ration C, B unit, from... I'm going to assume that 343 designation right here means March of 1943, and um, it's most likely going to be coffee in this as the beverage. So this, of course, would have been a B unit that would have went with a breakfast portion. Um, it's supposed to include biscuit, confection, and beverage. It's also, I think, supposed to include sugar, you know, sugar cubes. But uh, the can itself is in pretty good shape. It's got this sort of gold kind of... Um, I guess gold colored metal on the outside it's supposed to help with corrosion I suppose from back in the day uh, the key looks a little gnarly on the back at some point in history um, someone had broke off the key on this can and they decided to just stick it back on with some sort of putty or something like that but uh, we'll use this key to reopen to open this can now in a little bit so yeah, this is uh, something I've been looking forward to finding for a very long time and finally got a hold of one. Bought, a, bought this from a, a guy on eBay. And um, yeah, a little bit of background history obviously on these sort of things. This is supposedly, well not supposedly, this is, of course as it says on the can, the B unit for Field Ration C. And Field Ration C would have been basically canned rations at the United States military would have had, and these would have been developed uh, in the 1930s, and obviously this would have been the major um, canned ration that American forces would have had during the Second World War. It would have been in tandem with what was called an M unit, so a field ration C would have came with a B unit, which was considered their bread unit, and also, I guess, dessert unit mixed into one, and then their M unit, which would have been meat, so it would have been cans of things like, you know, beef stew, beef hash, uh, spaghetti and meatballs, franks and beans, some of that kind of stuff. They would have been a bit different, obviously, than some of the other rations they would have got. Field Ration C is the main sort of canned ration. They would have also had things like Field Ration A, which is basically just considered uh, fresh or frozen food, you know, that's cooked in a, in a mess kitchen or in a field kitchen. And then you would have had Field Ration B, which would have been canned or preserved foods that would have been cooked in the same sort of manner. And then we have Field Ration C. And these would have been basically what they considered to be a step above what a K ration or a D ration would have been. And a D ration obviously was just a, a block of chocolate, survival chocolate, I guess is the best way to put it. And then a K ration would have been a ration that was uh, boxed very much like a, um, I guess, a ration you would find today with an assortment of, you know, a can of meat, or depending on if it was breakfast, uh, you know, chopped eggs, something like that, beans, whatever. Also would then come with an accessory packet, you know, you'd get your salt and your sugar, and uh, cigarettes and matches and water purification tablets, and you'd also get things like crackers and cookies and, you know, a whole self-contained meal, I suppose, and you were supposed to get three of those per day. The idea of a K or a D ration was more like a survival ration, that if you got into combat or something like that, this is all you had available to you. This was seen as sort of just a step above that. Soldiers weren't meant to eat these for very long, although at some times during the Second World War, obviously due to supply issues and whatnot, sometimes soldiers had to you know, sustain themselves on nothing but C ration, can rations, for weeks on end. Um, studies actually were done during the war and after the war that showed that... Um, it's probably not good for a soldier to have uh, eaten these particular rations for any more than five days in a row. You know, there'd be certain deficiencies that you would find. So the big idea was was that you had this when you needed to, and you would hopefully then be supplemented with sort of fresh, you know, warm cooked food by a field kitchen or a mess kitchen. So um, yeah, I'm a little excited to uh, to open this up. Obviously, um, obviously the can itself is it's in pretty good shape. 
you know, there's not a whole lot of visible rust on it, which is a, a good sign. Um, you really can't tell what this is going to look like until obviously you open it. I've seen some reviews of these rations where you open it up and, you know, the crackers kind of got like a moldy kind of look to them or the, uh, the candy, which is going to be probably like a hard candy, boiled sweet kind of thing. They may have, um, you know, serious discoloration. Some of them may have liquefied at times. Uh, maybe the sugar cubes obviously have come into contact with the liquid and they're, you know, not in good shape. And usually there's like a little small tin of, um, of coffee in there as well. Now this is going to be an interesting ration for me to do as well because I'm someone who, anyone who watches my reviews certainly know it, but I'm someone who doesn't drink coffee, never have. So this ration, as long as I guess the coffee's not dry molded, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to break my no coffee rule for this ration. I thought if I'm going to ever have a, a cup of coffee, why not have my first cup of coffee ever be a cup of coffee that's, you know, 75 years old, a little over 75 years old, you know, from the Second World War. So, got a tray here and everything already. I guess what we'll do now, I suppose, is just get her opened up. So let's just try to take the key off. Of course, the putty's still kind of stuck to it, you know. Who knows how long that's been there like that. And sort of fit it in this slot if we can. And then let's open this up, see if we can get ourselves a hiss. Nope. No hiss. And we're getting this putty falling everywhere. Just lay the tray off to the side for now. And let's just clean up this putty that's fallen everywhere, and then we'll uh, we'll crack this open. All right, so we got that cleaned up a little bit, and uh, let's crack this open and and see what the uh, the contents are actually like. I'm uh, this is uh, it's a little hard to describe actually how I feel doing this because you know as a lover of history, it's interesting to sort of crack open what's basically a a time capsule to uh, you know the Second World War and. Uh, to see what soldiers themselves back then actually had to sort of subsist on. Um, this will be, yeah, f like I said, far and away the oldest thing I've ever eat eaten. Um, any of my previous reviews, the oldest thing I've had thus far is a, a peanut butter from a U.S. MCI ration from the Vietnam War era. I think it was from 1968. So yeah, this is, uh, you know, even 25 years older than that again. So... What do we have here? We've got our can of coffee, which says J.L. Kellogg's. It's interesting. The only review I've seen similar to this has had a, a Nescafe coffee packet, but this is J.L. Kellogg's. That's very, very interesting. And then what else do we have? We've got ourselves three sugar cubes. Domino sugar. Obviously these are the rectangular tablet sugar cubes. So yeah, they look like they're in great shape. And then the confection are these Hard candy, boiled sweets, whatever it is you want to call them. I don't see a brand name on them anywhere, and two of them appear to be of a slightly lighter color than the other. You see they have this sort of gold amber kind of hue to them. The plastic itself smells a lot like the, uh, the crackers, so it's going to be interesting to see actually what the flavor of these sweets actually are. Maybe they're orange, lemon... Who knows? But uh, we'll certainly give those a try as well. And then what do we have left? Well, we've got our crackers. And there's a lot of discoloration in there. And a lot of white flecks. Not entirely sure. That white flex is just sort of, you know, I guess grains, you know, I guess cracker dust or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Or if that's actually mold. But let's... Uh, Let's dump these out. Get a look at the inside of the can. 
The can looks pretty good, I must say. No rust. No, obviously no pinholes. So that should be good. So what we would have had, looks like we had uh, four, maybe five crackers themselves. And they're whole grain. You can easily see the, uh, the grain in them. The camera will focus. It's got a sense of how they smell. I mean, they smell like regular everyday sort of crackers. They're fairly thick, nice and airy. Let's find a piece that uh, looks like it's okay. There's no weird discoloration on it. Yeah, like this here, I'm yeah, I'm not keen on that whole sort of color there. That looks an awful lot like mold to me. Let's see if we can find a piece that at least looks salvageable. That one doesn't look too bad. Yeah. So, going in to give this a try. It passes the sight and smell test. Let's um, just be a little cautious here and try out the cracker itself. Remember, this is from March 1943. Now, oddly enough, that seems perfectly okay. Just let it sort of rest on my tongue for a little bit just to see if I get some of that, you know, cotton mouth, tum, tongue numbness kind of thing. But uh, that didn't happen. So it's, it's nice, actually. This is... Uh, Obviously, as old as it is, I'm sure it's lost some of its flavor profile. But um, for what it is, it's a nice hearty cracker. I'm sure a little bit of peanut butter or jam or something like that would be lovely on it. But it's got a nice uh, whole grain kind of flavor. And uh, I mean, it's, it's not bland. I mean, it's not sweet either, I suppose. Or it's not savory. But it's in sort of in the middle there of a, a standard sort of run-of-the-mill whole wheat cracker. So it's actually pretty nice. I guess next what we probably should do... This is a try with the coffee. Um, obviously, I've never, like I said, I've never drank a cup of coffee before. I've already got some water going here. I know how big the uh, the container usually is. How much coffee is usually in this? But let's try to open this up. I may need to get a knife or something to sort of wedge that open. Just one second. So let's see if we can just get in on the edge there and there we go. There's a little lip. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little tiny change in the indentation right here in the can. You can at least get something in underneath that. All right, so that took a awful lot more work than I had anticipated, but. It's finally open. Remember, this is a J.L. Kellogg coffee. And we crack open the tin, we get, well, we get what looks like freeze-dried coffee powder. And, oddly enough, it does actually appear to be perfectly fine. It uh, doesn't have any sort of dry mold or anything like that. Not that I can tell, obviously. So yeah, it seems perfectly fine. Uh, I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'm going to keep a little bit of this, or probably half of it, for someone I know that probably might actually appreciate this even more than me. Um, but I will give this a little try. So I've got some hot water already. I'm going to add some of the coffee to it. Just give that a bit of a stir. Now we'll try that first on its own. It's certainly got a nice dark color to it. Obviously, as someone who doesn't drink coffee, um, it's kind of strange seeing uh, seeing what this is going to be like. So yeah, let's just give this a try, um, see how it goes. Uh, obviously, I've never drank coffee before, like I've said. This should be interesting. I will say that it smells nice. 
Uh, I'm not a huge fan of even the smell of brewed coffee, but it's it's good. It's got a like a medium roast kind of kind of smell to it. A little bit a little bit bitter, I guess. But uh, let's see how it goes. Oh, yeah. So this is apparently what people like. Um, obviously, as someone who doesn't drink coffee very much, never actually. Aside from coffee flavored things, it's not bad actually. Um, I wouldn't call it bitter. It's a little bit of like a burnt kind of taste, I suppose, is the best way to put it. A little bit uh, woody, nutty. I'd probably describe it as a little bit acidic. But yeah, it, it's not bitter in any way. It's it's smooth, I suppose, is the best word you could use. But uh, let's just see what it's like if you add a sugar cube to it. So we're going to also use one of our Domino sugar cubes from 1943. Some people are probably losing their minds watching me destroy something like this. As you can see, the sugar cube looks perfectly fine. Drop that in there and let that dissolve a little bit. While that's doing its thing, Go back and try another little bite of this cracker. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Obviously, most of these don't look the best. So I'm a little apprehensive, obviously, about trying some of the other ones. This one here doesn't look too bad. So yeah, let's take a nice bite out of that one. It's got a nice snap to it. If you didn't know any better, you'd think they were fairly fresh. It's dissolved fairly well. Let's give it a try now with our, our Domino Sugar Cube in there. Hey, yeah, that's a a fairly strong coffee because that, that Sugar Cube really didn't do a whole lot to it at all. Not really picking up much sweetness of any kind. So yeah, that's a that's a that's a strong coffee, I must say. Um, what we really have left, I guess. We still got some of the cracker we can obviously eat, but we got these boiled sweets here or hard candy, which I'm interested to try out this one here oh and the plastic falls apart very easily in my haste we have this nice amber yellow colored sweet let's take a few little pieces of cellophane off there no need in eating plastic i suppose but yeah what we have here seems perfectly fine i honestly don't know what color this was supposed to be but let's uh, let's give it a taste and see what it is. If I had to guess, I'd say that's butterscotch, actually. And maybe all of them are butterscotch. The color all seems to match, I guess. But uh, it took a few seconds for anything to sort of happen, I guess is the best way to put it. I was kind of waiting for like some sort of citrus or fruit flavor, and that never did actually occur. And then started getting this sort of milky kind of flavor. And uh, then it kind of dawns on you, like, oh yeah, I'm sure butterscotch was a, certainly a thing that they would have had a lot of back then for when it comes to candy. But yeah, this is what that seems like it is. It's a nice subtle flavor. It's not strong or anything. Obviously, I'm sure once again, the flavor has been subdued over time. But uh, for what it is, I can imagine this would have been certainly very enjoyable. You know, when you got these perfectly fresh, I guess is the best way to put it. Let's give our cracker another bite. Let's... Dip it into the coffee. I'm sure someone would have done this back then. So yeah, once again, I'm amazed how well this has held up over time. This, this can is 75 years old. You almost don't want to think about it too much, but the fact that you're ingesting food that was made 75 years ago. Um, but you know, Everything is perfectly fine, obviously, aside from some of the, the crackers that look very discolored and, you know, look like there's a possibility of being mold on there. But some of the ones that look fine, they taste fine. I'm not feeling any sort of ill effects. Uh, usually you'd be able to pick up that right away on the, you know, the back of your throat or your, your tongue or something like that. But that seems perfectly fine to me. This coffee tastes, tastes all right, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, I can finally say now I've drank a cup of coffee. And it wasn't, you know, something from Tim Hortons or Starbucks or something like that or something from a, 
you know, from a grocery store. It was from a, a World War II ration that was 75 years old. But, um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to want to open up the rest of these sweets because they all seem like they're pretty much the same color. So I'm left to assume that they're all butterscotch. So we'll probably just keep those just for, you know, display purposes and whatnot. Same thing with the other two Domino sugar cubes. These are in perfect shape, so we'll keep those the way they are. And then I'll uh, pop the top back on the, the coffee, and I, I have someone I know that'll probably enjoy that very much. So we'll let them enjoy the rest of it. So yeah, guys, this has been the review of a... Uh, March of 1943, U.S. Army Field Ration C B unit from the breakfast portion. So a biscuit, confection, beverage, you see it all here. Everything's been perfectly fine. I'm uh, very, very happy how well this turned out because you never know with these sort of things. With, with age, things can certainly go wrong. This could have all been black and discolored and things were leaking and nothing would have been salvageable. But for the most part... Everything was salvageable and actually edible. So uh, there you go. This goes to show that some of the technology they may have had back then was uh, was perfectly okay. The uh, you know it still boggles the mind that you can have a, a canned ration from the Second World War that's you know of this good a quality today. It must have been stored uh, very well, and I know since it's come into my possession, it's certainly been stored well in a nice sort of cool dark area. Um, so yeah, once again, guys, thank you very much for stopping by and giving this review a watch uh, i'm very happy that it turned out the way it did and i'm looking forward to uh, coming back to you guys again soon with something new or something incredibly old uh, i also have another world war ii item uh, similar to something that steve 1989 has reviewed one of the british emergency ration chocolate bars uh, mine i believe is a few months older than his is and the container itself is in a little less uh, i guess good quality you know, it's not in as good a shape as a bit of rust and whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see then what the actual outside of the can, what its quality does to the quality of the contents. So yeah, once again, hope everybody, everybody has a good day. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Have a good one.